I'm going. Oops. Well, it looks like another beaver in the end, huh? Meet at the beaver! Am I supposed to say my name again? Yes. It's one be sweet potato here. I think we got a beaver. Looks like one of the ex-wives. <laughs> oh shit, I'm gonna have to cut that out. Why are you putting this in the pooper? A little smaller. Now you start. Now you start. Yeah. What you got? I'm not sure. I think it's a beaver again, Amanda. Swamp, sweet, swampy sweet potato here. Five and nine. <laughs> This is just a two-year-old beaver. That's okay. I can handle the two-year-old. Hey, here's another rat spot here in the river. The water's down this year. See all these runs? This is rat damage slash runs. They're all over here. So I like to blitz it with these little 110s. Uh, that's the original muskrat kind of bear. They're good for these little narrow runs, little tiny muskrat holes. They're not great for big open runs. But, you know, one year I caught eight, over 800 muskrats in these little spots. Uh, and, and if you want me to let you know, let me let you in on a secret. You want the secret to catching a lot of muskrats? Get off the freaking couch and do something. Stop eating potato chips and watching TV and watching the computer. Get out, set a lot of rat traps. You'll catch a lot of muskrats. They're everywhere. I mean, come on, hello. Get out in the outdoors and do something. I mean, old guys like me are keeling over. The young guys are like, eh, we want to play a video game. No, get out in the woods. That's how you catch a lot of rats. It's a big secret. Walk around a lot. Look at these. Look what the muskrats tried to do to this uh, clothes hamper or whatever it is. They tried to make a hut out of it. They they're the ones that stuffed it full of this, stuffed it full of that. There's none there now, but they uh, they give it a shot. They're very industrious. Um. So get out and do some. Get out in the woods and do something, please. This is Swamp Rat in the Thule. Um, you know, this is my young apprentice, Devante. He's learning how to do some trapping. I'm showing him how to make some dirt holes and some other trap sets, uh, you know, in the woods. You know, you know, I've been doing this 40-something years. And it's funny that I'm only 48 years old, but I've been trapping for 47. It, uh, you know how I get by like that, Devante? No. Oh. Short, fast legs. I'm very efficient. I know what I'm doing. I'm like a bobcat in the woods. I'm a ninja. I know everywhere I go, everything that there is. I mean, I don't want to, you know, blow my own horn or anything, but I'm really familiar with the woods. I spend a lot of time working, knowing these areas, know what I'm doing every time, every step I go. I really am a trained professional. You know what I mean? Like that there. Very professional. <laughs> and, and I'm very, for my ancient age, strong. Look at that. Yeah, I'm the man. All right. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go open the store and get some work done. All right, let's open the bait shop.
Swampzilla here. Hey, we're down here in the Hudson River again, trying to catch beavers. And we caught two or three beavers out in this channel set. But this is really silty water. It's got all brown, and the more you walk in it, the more muddy it is. So this is a 280 that I've talked about. This is a 280 Magnum, and it shuts like that. Uh, and it's good for everything, but it's too small, and I can no longer get it out there. Now, when a 280, be careful, because this is how tight they go. So don't ever snap, this is how tight they are. And if you get it too tight, see that finger? And how gnarly it is, and I've been caught quite a few times in there, including this year. Don't do that, it hurts. Try not to do that. Now, uh, I wanna show these stabilizers that come up with quite a few years ago now, I'm an old man. But I can get this thing right where I want it, in that deep, silty water, and it goes on here like this. It says 330 stabilizer, and I wire the trap right to the stabilizer because I've never had one go over three or four feet because it's like a giant gravel hook, even if they knock it over, even if they're whatever, because you know, you catch them by the head or the body, they're not going anywhere. They die pretty instantly. So I like it, it's handy because I put the wire right on the bottom of it, and they never go over two, three feet with this thing anyways. So that's what I do. But this will go right in that muddy channel that has gotten too muddy and too, I can no longer block it off. So we're gonna, I've, I've pulled the 280 out, we're gonna put this in the channel. But, uh, but these are real handy to have if the water's real deep, you can't get there, whatever, you know? So uh, yeah, it works out pretty good. Swamp rat out. All right, this is a clay pond. They're always after me to get rid of the muskrat because they're always drilling holes in them. Um, you can see the runs in a clay pond, they leave it. You don't even need the air bubbles. If it was frozen, you could see the air bubbles, but we can see the clay run, but as long as you don't disturb the area. I am going to, you can see it coming out of there, they leave a trail that goes out that way a little bit, but it goes over to the right, over by that old tire. So, that's the entrance, right there, if I can reach it, it's a little hairy. I'm kind of a short guy, I smoked when I was younger like my daughter, and it's not in my throat, but uh, a little bit borderline, that's yeah, alright. It's all good, Amanda. Captain Rattastic here. We're in a farm pond situation. It's like a big overgrown farm pond. It's bigger than a farm pond. But if you look around, you'll see the uh, lack of cattails in this situation. There's not, you know, muskrats love cat, the roots on cattails and a lot of that vegetation. They also like, I've seen them eat a lot of snails and clams and anything like that. Uh, they, they have a varied diet. They really love snails. They bite the tops right off of them. I've seen big piles of them in the Hudson River. The Hudson River uh, where I trap is loaded with that kind of feed base in spots. And this pond is not. So you noticed we're just riddled with muskrat holes and there's muskrats. But see how small most of the muskrats are. And that's lack of diet. A uh, very diet that's good for them. I mean they're eating whatever they can. They'll come up and graze on the regular grass. Whatever they can come up with, they'll eat. But the, the food source is not good here. But look at these, very small muskrats. And I make the best out of what I can. The muskrats gotta go, they've riddled this whole area up. But there's one normal size, and that's real big for this pond. Uh, but these are more like average pond muskrats. And it's middle of November. These rats aren't gonna get any bigger, but that's the way she goes. So small rat from Whatever I said my name was, Rat, what did I say my name was? Rat Rattastic, I don't know. Rattastic. Hey, Captain hey! Rat